We question our daily position Seeking answers and definitions Get the queries of your chest With Ahkam SOS Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I am your host Abu Talib Muhammad and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'as. Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. How are you? Well inshallah. Alhamdulillah. How's your day been so far? Great. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. We'll have many questions coming in, lots of excitement. And inshallah before we start any questions or before we start about what the show is going to be about today, um, we are going to congratulate uh, inshallah on the upcoming on the birth of Imam Rada sallallahu alayhi wa Our eighth Imam. May Allah inshallah invite us for his ziyara very soon and I give the show to you Shaykhna to say something. Inshallah. A'udhu billahi al-sami'an alim minash shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. Wa la'anatullahi ala a'da'ihim ajma'in. Um, we have a hadith in the book Man la yahdharhu al-faqih. Um, narrated by Hamran. حمزة بن حمران قال أبو عبد الله الصادق عليه السلام إمام الصادق states with regards to إمام رضا عليه السلام يقتل حفدتي بأرض خراسان my children will be killed in the land of خراسان so the Imam talks about uh, what's going to happen in, in خراسان نعم في مدينة يقال لها طوس in a city called طوس, uh, طوس which is now known as uh, مشهد نعم من زاره إليها عارفا بحقه the one who visits uh, this city and the, 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 shrine the shrine of the Imam عليه السلام عارفا بحقه recognizes the حق mm. and the right of this Imam نعم أخذته بيده أخذته بيدي يوم القيامة I wow. will take his hand on the judgment وأدخلته الجنة ما شاء الله and I would enter him into the paradise wow so what a very nice hadith that is Imam al-Sadiq would be the Shafi'ah, would intercede for the believer who goes and visits the Imam Rada alayhi salam in Mashhad. Alayhi awadhi alayhi salatu alayhi salam, that's, that's really nice. Uh, Insha'Allah, insha we, are, we are along those insha'Allah. Yes, then the Imam of course, it's a long hadith, I'll take part, just part of it. Nah. Explains the Imam the meanings of عارفن بحقه. What does, you know, the meaning of recognizing uh, the haq of the Imam? He says, يعلم أنه إمام مفترض الطاعة. He recognizes that this individual, this man who is buried in this location, is the Imam in which uh, obeying him is obligatory, واجب, mandatory. غريب شهيد. He's alone and he is a شهيد martyr as well. من زاره again the Imam says من زاره عارفا بحقه. You know we have this uh, these words are mentioned about. Ziyarat Karbala, for example, Man Zara Hussein fi Karbala, Harif and Bahak. So recognizing the haq of this Imam, that he is the Imam, uh, you know, Wajib uh, Ta'a, represents Rasulullah, represents Allah as Hujja on earth. This is what Arif and Bahak means. Man Zara who Arif and Bahak, Atahullah Azza wa Jal, Ajra Sabina Shahidan. Allah would give him the reward of 70 martyrs. But what kind of martyrs? Sab'een shaheedan mimman istushhida bayna day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The martyrs who were killed in by the hands of, you know, before or in the battlefield, the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah is the commander of that battle, imagine. Like Uhud, like Badr. So you get that reward of those shuhada for the one who visits Imam Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam. Another hadith, again, from the same book, Kitab al-Faqih, عن الرضا عليه السلام أنه قال The Imam himself, he speaks about himself. The first hadith was from Imam Sadr عليه السلام. This one is from Imam الرضا himself, talking about himself. He says, من زارني, the one who visits me in Mashhad, من زارني على بعد داري, from far distance, you know, you come all the way from Iraq, from Pakistan, from India, from Europe, exactly. من زارني على بعد داري أتيته يوم القيامة في ثلاثة مواطن I would come on the day of judgment as a reward in three locations important locations in the day of judgment 
حتى أخلصه من أهوالها. So I would save him from the horrifying scenes of those uh, three locations in Day of Judgment. In Day of Judgment. Number one, إذا تطايرت الكتب يمينا وشمالا. When the books are, of the deeds are given, نعم. the books of deeds, أعمال, are given. are given to the people. Some failed, some have passed. You know. and, and that is, of course, uh, a scary moment. Yes. You know, we don't know, yes. we don't know the results. You know. That's right. For, you know, for example, we have the result, exam results from university or college. You know, it's going to be a bit uh, worrying for some it people. It is. So the Imam would intercede and help you and aid you in this situation. No. He would be next to you, for example. Uh, and on the uh, on that bridge, which which leads towards the he heaven Heavens. and paradise. No. Again, the Imam would intercede and help you to cross that bridge. And in the uh, when the scales are have been established no. to put your amal, the good and, and the, the bad. bad. So if the bad is heavier, the Imam comes in, for example, intercedes. And you know, because of your visitation too, the Imam you know, bless us with this ziyara, inshallah. Ilahi amin, ilahi amin. Thank you very much, Shaykhna, for that hadith. That was a really nice hadith, and inshallah, it brings more excitement for us to make our way, inshallah, to visiting the shrine of Imam Marada. Inshallah, we are of the visitors of Imam Marada, and we are along the sides of those that Imam Sadiq will hold onto their hands and enter them to the paradises, inshallah. Shaykhna, as we have said previously, the show is live. We want to hear your questions, we want to hear the issues, we want to hear what questions you have in your mind. This show is yours, it's Ahkam SOS, it's live, it's available through Facebook, um, it's live on YouTube, it's live all over. You can give us a call, why not give us a call on plus 440203-515-0199 or you can send in your questions via WhatsApp, you can send in your questions via YouTube, via Facebook and as well you can email us. That's also much easier for you guys. We have many questions coming in, but we always prefer to listen to your voices, getting to speak to the Sheikh directly or speaking to me. You'll be able to get your questions answered straight away. Sheikh Nair, we have many questions coming in. Uh, again, some questions we were not able to answer from last time, but inshallah we'll keep always up to date and answer as many questions as we have. We'll start off with some questions from WhatsApp and it says, Salamun alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is it permissible to perform a, surg a surgical operation to stop or limit procreation? If this causes uh, permanent infertility, um, in this case of course it's not permissible, um, you can't stop. Uh, the process of the pregnancy, for example, with, with some operations in which uh, you know, prevents one from having children for the future. Yes, the short-term one, you can. You know, there's specific medications, you know, you know, pills taken, for example, uh, which would prevent that temporarily, that's fine, you know, for short-term, but not for the long-term and disabling that organ in which one cannot uh, no. have any more children, for example. No, inshallah. inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikh. Yeah. We will move on with another WhatsApp question. It says, what is the correct way to do tawassul? Tawassul, um, uh, the best uh, means or the best um, um, example, dua tawassul in Mafatih al Janan. Yes. Uh, in which uh, we would say, inna tawajjahna wa istashfa'na wa tawassalna bika ila Allah. You see? وَقَدَّمْنَاكَ بَيْنَ الْحَوْجَاتًا يَا وَجِيهًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إشفع لنا عند الله. The best means of tawassul is dua tawassul. Inshallah, inshallah, uh, we'll be reciting that inshallah as many times as we can. We have a really nice question that's coming from another end of the world and it's coming in from Japan. And it says, Salam alaykum or salam from Japan. I love the show and I have a question. Is eating lobster halal? And it's a YouTube question. It's indeed haram and forbidden. Um, what we are allowed to eat from the uh, sea or, you know, samak al-bahar uh, is only uh, the, the fish which has scales on, on the body of that fish. No. Uh, that transparent, uh, shining uh, skin, yes. which is known as scales, or phallus. Uh, and the exception is for the prawns, Other, otherwise the rest of the uh, sea animals is forbidden, lo lobsters. Uh, crabs, uh, oysters, oysters uh, shark, dolphins and so forth, they're all no. forbidden. 
Naam, inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And it's really good to hear that we're getting questions from all around the world. So if you're local, if you're in another country, if you're abroad, if you're out of London, send in your questions. The questions are coming to us from all around the world, from Japan, questions are coming in. So why not you send in your question to us? As we said previously, the show is live. We're able to take in questions. If you give us a call on plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero one double nine nine. And we have some more questions coming in and it is a WhatsApp question. It says, please can you tell us why do she I hate Aisha and Hafsa? Yet they are the wives of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's a WhatsApp question. You see, we don't hate an individual because we have um, a personal issue with them at all. We hate because Allah hates. We, uh, you know, um, um, reject because Allah rejects. Uh, and the Quran is very clear. Surah Tahrim is very clear uh, that it speaks to uh, the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in Tatuba Fakat Sagat Ulubukuma. Go and read the meanings of these verses no. against those two women. Well, how the Quran spoke against them and how they made this plot against the Holy Prophet. Uh, in overall, as I've said, uh, if Allah rejects, we reject. Quran rejects them. We reject. The Hadith rejects them. Rasulullah rejects them. In many narrations, read not in, from the Shia, from the Sunnah books. Uh, and, and the most uh, vicious or the most horrifying uh, or um, you know uh, you know bad scenes or actions they, they committed is the battle of camel Ma she waged Jamal. waged a war harab jamal she waged a war in basra against amirul mu'minin at least he was her fourth caliph at least in their belief at the time so at the time and uh, the quran stated the Holy Prophet stated, Remain in your houses, do not leave your house after the Prophet's departure. But she disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jal. No. So she went against the Quran, at least against the Quran. She did not uh, implement it. No, she left the house. That's by itself is, is a sin, a great sin. الكبائر, no. That needs punishments. We don't hate, hate anyone without evidence, without any uh, personal issue. If Allah hates, we will hate. If Rasulullah hates, we will hate. We will hate. If the Quran hates, we do the same thing. Just like we say, Sirman liman salamakum wa harwa liman harabukum. Exactly. It's very straightforward and I think that really answers the question and puts a full stop behind the question. Um, very well explained, Shaykhna, and I think it's really straightforward. We have some more questions coming in and it says, Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is it permissible for a male doctor to look at woman's body or touch it for the purpose of medical examinations? If this is the situation in which uh, there's no alternative, let's say female doctors, for example. Yes. You know, uh, the same gender doctor, for example, and, and he's compelled to do so um, for the examination of, the, of that uh, you know, the opposite gender, let's say, the, the woman. Um, in this case, there's no uh, objection to the extent required. You see, sometimes, uh, you know, some doctors might think that, well, now it's halal for me, so I can touch, I can look. If you can, and you think you don't need to touch, then you have to wear gloves for them. Yes. Use the gloves, avoid touching the skin uh, of the opposite gender, for example, no. the patient. You have to see how much you need to look or touch to the extent required and don't go further than that. Otherwise, um, it should be fine uh, when there's uh, no alternative, as I've said, a female doc doctor no. who is better than this male doctor, for example. No. And they're compelled. In this Inshallah. Situation. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. As we had said previously, the, live is, the show is live. We want to hear your voices. Why not give us a call on plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero one double nine nine, getting the opportunity to speak to me or to the sheikh and getting uh, questions answered or getting your answers for your questions. Sheikh, now we have some more questions coming in from WhatsApp, which is really good. And it says, is it allowed for a woman to do makeup and perfume herself when she goes out? Um, any beautification is not permissible uh, for the, for the uh, sisters who go out in public uh, when there are, um, you know, the opposite gender male, you know, who are not mahram to this woman to be seen by them. She must either cover her face with a, with a you know, niqab or burqa, avoid, no. uh, or, or she should remove them before leaving the house. No, no. So that's the issue basically. Inshallah, that's answered the question 
for the person that's asked the question as well for the other viewers that have thought of the same question inshallah that's answered them and we have a question I think it's a big topic and it's become the question which everybody's been asking it's all over the news and it says what is the Sheikh's thoughts on the Lady of Heaven movie it's a WhatsApp question the Lady of Heaven um, speaks about uh, what happened exactly after the demise of the Holy Prophet sallallahu at least that incident of attacking the door of Fatima alayhi salam. And these are all written and mentioned in the books of the uh, Shia and the non-Shia. Why this scream and shout for banning this film? Why? Let the people know the, 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 the truth. And the, the sad thing about is not from the Ahlul Sunnah. The, the sad thing about is from the Shia and some of the ulama of the Shia who uh, for the purpose of unity between the Muslims, yes. they come and stand against these types of movies or uh, let's say lectures or sermons or, or even uh, programs that they come and they speak against it for the sake of unity. What kind of unity we have today? When our brothers in Afghanistan, the Shia are being butchered and killed and massacred every day, every few days, nobody speaks about them. Nobody speaks about that. But they only speak about the movie coming out that shows the truth yes, exactly. and brings evidence of their books. That's the problem. I'm trying to say that uh, unity cannot be preserved by uh, um, preventing others to say the truth. No. These are mentioned in, in our books and in their books. If you want, as a Shia alim or a Sunni alim, you want to prevent uh, people seeing this film, you have to prevent your books from uh, being read online and in libraries and in, in, in the shops, bookshops. Yeah. You have to prevent them from being sold or, or read by people. Because all of them in their books, Shia and Sunni, they all mention this incident. Kitab Sulaim ibn Qais, Bihar al-Anwar, mentions this incident. Uh, Kitab al-Mata'an of the uh, Bihar, for example. Other books mention these incidents. You have to prevent them so you can preserve the unity that you, you, you uh, you know, looking for, forward for, for achieving this unity. No. The books of Shia is filled with this story. And, and those ulama who are against this film and, and such like, they know, they know that, um, you know, they, they have their own majalis, Fatimiyya, they, they <laughs> commemorate. They contradict they, themselves. But the problem is, when you stand against this type of films or sermons or, or majlis, then that's, of course, against the true unity. The Quran says, وَاَعْتَصَمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا حَبْلُ اللَّهِ تَفْسِيرُ فَأَهْلِ الْوَيْتِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ is the Ali Muhammad عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ is to behold on Ali Muhammad. The حَبْلُ اللَّهِ, the unity is with Ali Muhammad. No. Other than that, it's not unity at all. It is, it's a complete disunity from Islam. No. Inshallah, thank you very much for that, Shaykh. And I believe the show um, is really doing what it needs to be done. And I also think that um, Insha'Allah, we've got many more questions coming in and we have some more questions and it's other questions, it says, it's a YouTube question and it says, can crocodile skin be used for clothing? Uh, the problem comes when, when one wants to, to pray Salah. The Salah is, is a, as, a ihtiyat, as a precaution, one should not use it for Salah, wear it for Salah. Yeah. So is it nejis or not? You see, um, snakes and crocodiles are cold-blooded animals, no. so they are not nejis. Uh, but you can't really pray, pray with these skins you know, when it comes to salah. No. We've got many questions coming from WhatsApp today. Inshallah, we'll have many more coming in from YouTube as well. And it says, if a person doesn't get married, will that person be questioned on the Day of Judgment? What if that person has a valid reason for refusing to get married? You see, initially the marriage is a sunnah. No. And nikah sunnati, it's a prophetic sunnah. So one should stick to the sunnah. And number two, exceptions are exceptions, of course. We don't, we're not going to uh, talk about and argue about the exceptions. You know, some might have an issues that they couldn't get married. <coughs> there are issues, we don't know. You know, <coughs> mental issues, uh, um, other issues, they have their own excuses. But in overall, it is a sunnah, a sunnah of the Prophet Insha'Allah. Thank you very much, Sheikhna. <coughs> and we have some more questions coming in. And it says, does the ruling of hijab depend on the uruf of the country? What is important that the hijab covers the woman's body in dignity, in chastity, and doesn't show the curves of the body, you know, uh, 
as I've said before, no. to show uh, the body uh, size, for example, yes. leg size, for example, and so forth. But that's the most important. You want to wear abaya, chador, whatever you want to wear, you, wear, you have to make sure that it doesn't exposes the body shape. Yes. <coughs> Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikh. Now, to all the viewers, please stay seated. A short clip will be shown on how you can send in your questions. Please have a look at the show. It's really simple. Have a look at the short break. It's very simple. It's straightforward. And we'll hope to see you very soon after the break. I have a question regarding keeping pictures Is of scholars Is it permissible to plant trees by or Was over Islam the establish? Graves? based on peace Is and non-violence. Is it permissible to collect donations for charity projects from Is it permitted to consume canned food imported from non-Muslim countries? Is there an issue for men looking at non-Muslim women? To have your questions answered live, call in on plus four four two zero three five one five zero one nine nine, or WhatsApp us on plus four four seven four one five zero nine two one five five. Alternatively, you can also email us on ahkamsos at imamhussein.tv. Number three. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back inshallah that show or that short clip was beneficial for you to send in your questions over it's very easy and it's straightforward you're able to send your questions in via whatsapp via facebook or give us a call as we had said previously and we have some more questions that have come in and the first question that we will read it says if someone is not able to form ghusl but is able to perform tayammum. Is it permissible for him to have marital intercourse with his wife, even if the prescripted time of a particular salah has begun? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yes, it is permissible because um, the duty or, or the taklif of this individual now is to perform tayammum. Due to an illness, let's say, skin issues and so forth, he can't or she can't do any wudu or ghusl. So now the taklif is tayammum. <laughs> if, if, I mean, they can't, uh, you know, ignore or, or stop this intercourse because of, uh, you know, not being able to do the ghusl or, 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 or uh, wudu. No. Uh, so in this case, uh, their taklif is tayammum, and they can also have this uh, intercourse as well. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And we have some YouTube questions, and it says, "Is crab halal?" We just mentioned. We just mentioned uh, something about um, oh, lobster. Lobster. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh did say that anything that doesn't have the outer skin is haram, and I think this clarifies that yes. crab is also halal. Haram. Uh, haram sorry, haram crab is, is haram yes. to clarify. Crab is haram. Uh, oysters are also haram, and lobster is haram. Uh, we have another YouTube question. It says, "What are the best books in Arabic to learn the science of hadith?" It's a YouTube question. Uh, in terms of the hadith science, ilm al-diraya, of course you need the Hawza studies with this regard. Durus fi ilm al-diraya, for example. There are books with regards to the ilm al-diraya, uh, in which uh, there's kutub of the rijal as well, ilm uh, al-rijal again. These are Hawza study uh, books, but if you want to learn general information about the meanings of the hadith, hadith. You can start with Sharh Usul al Kafi. I think Tuhaf al Mirat al Aqul or Tuhaf al Aqul. Mirat al Aqul. Sharh Usul al Kafi, for example. Try to find these books which have Sharh of the Hadith. Be it Kitab al Kafi or other books. That would inshallah. help, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And again, we have another YouTube question. It says, Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Can you give me a summary on the history timeline of the main Shi'i and Sunni Hadith books? And what makes the Shi'i sources more authentic than the rest? Wassalamu alaikum. <laughs> this needs our, an over hour of uh, you know uh, lecture. I think we'll need to have a special show for that. Inshallah, but if you give us a inshallah, brief summary. Inshallah. So you see, in overall, Tadwin um, al-Hadith or writing the Hadith was banned when the Holy Prophet ﷺ passed away for almost hundred years. It was banned. And I think that in the era and the time of uh, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, no. one of the Amawids, uh, so-called Khulafa, he allowed for writing the Hadith. Yes. They wanted to separate the Muslims and the companions and the Tabi'een from the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which relates to Ahlul Bayt, That was the 
main objective. So people would, would be raised, would be you know, nurtured, educated only from the Amawi sides. Yeah. Amawid ahadith, that's it. Which praises, you know, the first, second, third, which praises, let's say, Muawiyah, which praises uh, other uh, Sahaba and so forth. Yeah. And separate them from Ahlul Bayt, And that took almost 100 years. And then after 100 years, they started to write the hadith, of course, many of them, which was basically fabricated, as mm -hmm. we know. You know, they, they st uh, the Amawids worked very hard to fabricate the hadith which, which praised Ahlul Bayt, or at least a hadith to praise the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. Yeah. You know, that, for example, uh, um, 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 that yeah. I'm the city of knowledge and Ali is the, the, is door. the door. And they called Muawiyah, I don't know, the window or the ceiling or something. They, they started to insert in the hadith al sahih, in true hadith, they started to forge and to change those hadith. They worked very, very, you know, uh, in a smart way and uh, they worked very, and pay, they paid thousands of, of dinars and dirham to, to do so and they bought people with this regard. Nah. That, for example, uh, don't approach salah while you're, you're drunk. drunk. This is to Ali alayhi salam, na'udhu billah. Nazrat fi Ali alayhi salam, wal'ayyadhu billah. They tried to manipulate and change hadith which uh, pra praises their own leaders, nah. the Amawids and, and the, and, and, and the Saqifi uh, leaders. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. I will say to be of all honesty, as much as they try, as much as they try to edit the hadith and the rawayat, it's straightforward that the path of Ali ibn Abi Talib is always straight and he is always the door to the heavens as the Prophet has said. We have another WhatsApp question that says, if I do not have two Shia Adil people to witness my divorce, how else can I divorce someone? You must have the two uh, witnesses in somehow. It's, it's a must. You have to get them in somehow. Uh, otherwise, you cannot have a divorce without with two witnesses. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And we have some more questions. And it says, uh, we've got many questions about hadiths and books. It says, what are the best books in Arabic to learn the science of a hadith? As we have said that previously already. And we have another question. It says, Salamun alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is tab'eeth? Tab? Tab'eeth. Tab'eeth is, um, um, seems to be to do with the fiqh, fiqh uh, questions. Uh, Tab'eed in different masail نعم. from different ulama ala kulli hal. Insha'Allah, insha'Allah, that clarifies. Shaykh, now we're going to come back to some of the questions that they sent previously in the show. And it says here, what is the ruling concerning someone who moves forward and backwards while reciting? We see that a lot while people recite, they move backwards and forwards. I personally do that when I recite Quran or some ad'iyah. They have to basically um, uh, stay calm and, and, and stabilize and then repeat what they've said and recited, the dhikr or the verses, in, in, in a stable condition. Uh, just repeat whatever you said no. uh, before and that will be fine. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And we have some more questions and it says, Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is it valid for one to vow to donate his blood? in that whenever he has sufficient blood, he donates it to a particular organization, what will benefit from the vow? Yes, the nether is correct, and the same applies to the, uh, um, the oath, the qasam and the covenant, ahad. So if he said, uahadullah or billah, uqsumu billah, for example, or for example, nether, uh, the seal of the nether, Lillahi alayya nadr and whatever is the nadr, then of course the nadr becomes wajib upon this person. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And we have a YouTube question. It says, is wearing garments and or pants below your ankles haram? You see, what is important uh, initially, if it's for salah, to cover your prov the private parts, the back and the front. That is the minimum requir requirement. And of course, the better is to cover from the navel till the knees. That's uh, in terms of the better, uh, uh, you know, wearing in, in the salah, of course. No. Uh, but in overall, one should basically uh, make sure that uh, they don't show their 
the parts in which be it in salah or even to Out other, other people. Yeah. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And we have much more YouTube questions. And we have it says, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullah. Am I allowed to go on a bike ride with my non mahram female cousin? Both our parents know and allow us, and we will be in public and keep our boundaries. You see, the Quran is very clear. It states, Wala muttakhidi akhdan. Khadan means friendship. When you go out with your cousin in this situation, is it some kind of a relationship, friendship? It's, it's, it is some kind of friendship. No. What do you call this? So one should avoid any type of friendships or uh, relationships with the opposite gender. Because that will lead to something else. So it's to prevent things such as? Exactly. I mean, uh, it's a problematic to be honest. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And we will come back to more WhatsApp questions. And it says, is Sunni and Shia marriage encouraged by our ulama? Um, there are different sides with this, with this uh, question. Number one, if uh, this Sunni uh, female marries this Shia male, for example. No. And uh, the Shia male would uh, guide this lady towards the path of Ahlul Bayt. That's, of course, encouraged. Because you have now uh, turned uh, an individual to, uh, towards the, the path of Ahl al-Bayt But the problem is if they both each stubborn and insist on his aqeedah. No. The Sunni remains, remains Sunni, wife or, or husband. <coughs> and the Shi'i remain, remains Shi'i, wife or husband. Then now you have the conflict when you have the children, children. and kids at, at the end. At the yes. end of are they going to follow the, the, mother? the, the mother or the father? Or the father. That's the problem. Inshallah, thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And Inshallah, we'll be having many more questions coming in. We haven't had a live call. And Inshallah, we'll be excited or expecting one very soon. As we have said previously, the show is live and the show is yours. We want to hear your questions. We want to hear your voices. Why not give us a call on plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero one double nine nine? And you can also send in your questions via WhatsApp, via Facebook, or via YouTube. As it's speaking, we have some more YouTube speak, uh, YouTube questions coming in. And a question says: Can a woman go to a mixed gym as long as she's fully covered and isn't doing any exercise that attracts men's attention? The problem is the uh, the special suit they wear for the for the for the gym. Uh, has to be a bit tight. I mean, she can't go with the, with the abaya or chador and play the gym. I, I don't think it would allow her to do so because of the, some of the machineries, uh, you know, uh, hazard and so forth. So it's a problematic mushkila. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Now we have a question and it's from YouTube it's again. And it says, what is wilaya taqwiniya? We have uh, two authorities. Wilaya means authority. Wilayat Taqwiniya and Wilayat Ashri'iyya. Wilayat Taqwiniya is the authority over the universe. No. As uh, the prophets, they, they had this Wilayat Taqwiniya. Uh, Isa used to raise the dead from the, the grave. That's Wilayat Taqwiniya. Um, the Holy Prophet وآله, split the moon into two halves. Wilayat Taqwiniya. Authority over the universe. Wilayat Ashri'iyya is authority over the Sharia. Yes. That the, uh, the Holy Prophet can uh, basically issue a verdict or a hukum, for example, no. by the uh, delegation from Allah Azza wa Jal. No. So that's the meanings of these two. Inshallah. We've got a WhatsApp question that says, On the opinion of Ayatollah Bashir al-Najafi, is it recommended to two tatbir? Um, I believe so. The, uh, Sheikh Bashir would, would, yes, he would recommend even in a speech he had, um, the videos on the YouTube, that he says, tabbar, uh, tabbar, tabbar. So he would recommend three times for yeah. the one to do the tatbir. And of course, uh, it's sadly to see some people who would attack uh, 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 these Husseini rituals uh, without going back to the ulama, to the, to the learned and knowledgeable ulama to see what they say. If you don't want to do it, don't do it and stay away from this, these rituals. Sahih. But do not stand against, against these it. rituals because you might be uh, uh, stopped on the day of judgment by Imam Hussain Sahih. Imagine that 
just imagine that Imam Hussein would be pleased on the Day of Judgment. If he was pleased with, this, with these acts, what would be your answer in front of the Imam on, on the Day of Judgment? So, ahtiyat, stay away from attacking uh, on, on the Sha'ar al Hussein alayhi salam. That's you may na'udhu billah, not get the intercession and shifa'a of the Imam alayhi salam. Alayhi afdal salatu wa salam. And we have some more WhatsApp questions. It says, Salaamun alaykum. Can a woman kill herself if she is certain a man will rape her to protect her honor? It's haram uh, to kill one oneself. Uh, there's a few verses mentioned about yes. it's, it's haram for the one to kill himself. Inshallah. Uh, one is not allowed to do so. Inshallah, I think there are many other ways to work along such problems. We have some more questions and it's a WhatsApp question and it says, Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh, is it permissible to own a female slave according with Surah Al Ahzab, ayah number 50? You see, some of the ahkam uh, of the past has been uh, in somehow uh, expired, for example, yes. of having sla slaves, buying slaves, because we don't have any more slaves in this day and age. We don't have any battles with the non Muslims by, led by a ma'asum. Uh, who leads the battle, for example, and, and as a result, we have um, Mushrikeen women or Muslim women, for example. Yes. Those days have lapsed and, and, and ended. Gone. So, uh, if you want to have such a thing, you have to go back and ask. Uh, if there is such an issue, you have to raise it to the office of the marriage and see uh, if there's actually slavery is still available and exists. No. Insha'Allah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikh. Now we have a question. It's a YouTube question. It says, <coughs> is niqab better than hijab? Niqab is, uh, is a complete hijab, in other words. If you want a proper hijab, the hijab of, of Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam, of Lady Zainab alayhi salam, that's a complete hijab. No. Uh, but anyhow, it's not wajib. Uh, what is wajib is to cover the whole body, as I've said, white garment, white abaya, chadu, and so forth. And they're allowed to show their hands and face only. Yes. Without any beauty, beauty or makeup. No. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And we have a Facebook question. And it says, can a Muslim believe and not pray? Um, the problem is, um, uh, uh, we have a hadith about Tariq al-Salah, the one who uh, leaves prayer. Leaves prayer and of course, there are punishments with this regard. I don't want to mention the hadith. It's a long hadith about the punishment of those who do not pray uh, deliberately, intentionally. There are adab for them. So um, your iman is, is, is incomplete. It, it's not uh, to the standard. Inshallah, we advise those that have delayed their prayers and left their prayers to go back as soon as possible to be on the right path. And we have some more YouTube question and it says, is it haram to learn Irfan from Mawla Sadri. We don't have in Islam uh, uh, philosophy or Irfan. We have Kitabullah wa Itrati Ahli Bayti. We have to behold on these two. Other than that, is outside the Islam. It was uh, uh, brought inside the Isla Islam by the Abbasids, as I've said before. From uh, those books of philosophy were brought from Greece into the Islamic uh, world and the Abbasid time and the Harun time and afterwards translated and then inserted into the Islamic literature. No. So we reject the Irfan and Falsafa as a whole. Of course, I don't say all of it is wrong or batil. Of course, you have to mix. When you have uh, Aqeedah or religion, you have to mix Haqq and Batil yes. so people would accept it. Yes. You can't bring everything Batil. So, uh, best thing one distance himself or herself from Tasawwuf, uh, Arfan, and Falsafa, uh, and stick to Kitabullah wa Atrati Ahli Bayti only. Insha'Allah. Thank you very much for that, Shaykh. And we have a question on WhatsApp. It says, What is Ilham? Ilham, uh, inspiration. That's the meaning, if you want. <laughs> it's very straight. Thank you very much for that. We have more YouTube questions. It says, I forgot to say a line in Adhan or Iqama. Do I have to say the whole Adhan or Iqama again? I forgot to say. Uh, 
You just repeat Sayyid Qatam al Salah and then Allah will let Allah and finish the Adhan. InshaAllah. Thank you very much for that, Shaykhna. <coughs> and we have a question and it says Salaamu Alaikum. There are so called Shias who are protesting against the movie The Lady of Heaven. They they joined a protest against the movie which included Nawasib chanting Kafir Kafir Shia Kafir. Is it permissible to curse those so called Shias? And it's a WhatsApp question. May Allah guide them. Uh, may Allah guide them. We have similar Shia who stood against the, Sh the Husseini Sha'ar, who stood against those who uh, uh, um, do Azadari. Nah. So the, uh, we would leave this issue with Allah Azza wa Jal. And as I've said, Imam Hussein will be, will be in charge. And of he'll them. be judging them. And we have a hadith that the one who takes over uh, the Hisab before. The day of judgment is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So in their graves, they have to answer Allah Azza wa Jal. That did they support Ali Muhammad or, or, or the of Muhammad? Or Al Abu Sufyan. Mm. They will have to answer on their judgment. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikh. Now we have a question on YouTube. It says, What is meant by saying that Fatima alayhi salam is a Huriya? Uh, Fatima Hawra and Siya because she was made in heaven as we have. Uh, uh, narrations uh, and that's apple tree of, of heaven that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi he ate and he came down and he approached Khadija alayhi salam. The hadith uh, mentioned in different phrases and, and, and wordings. So she is made in heaven but no. in, in a human hur, as a human huri. Inshallah, thank you very much for that Shaykhna and unfortunately to the, all the viewers we have come down to the last and final question and our question is from WhatsApp. It says, Salaamun Alaikum Shaykhna. I was reading Salah and on my third rak'ah I accidentally said Surat Al-Ikhlas after Surat Al-Hamd. Do I have to repeat my Salah or not? I want the opinion of Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi if you can. So in his, in his third rak'ah he mentioned so yes, in the third rak'ah he accidentally recited Surah Al-Ikhlas after Hamd. So he read Al-Hamd and he read Surah Al-Ikhlas. Will he have to start again? For any addition or subtract, subtraction from the Salah, unintentionally, you have to do two Sajda Sahu. No. Sajda Sahu. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Shaykhna. And to all the viewers, thank you very much for viewing and sending in your questions. Inshallah, we have read and answered as many questions as we can. And for those that have sent in their questions that have not been answered, Inshallah, we'll try and aim to answer them in the next coming shows. And for those that haven't sent their questions in, please get your questions ready and send them over for the next shows coming. Before we end up and wrap up the show, we would like to say that the book of Islamic law by Ayatollah al uzma Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi is available. If you contact the numbers which are available below, inshallah somebody will be able to help you and advise you on how you can order them. And for now, inshallah, I would like to say thank you very much. Fi amanillah. Goodbye. <laughs>